Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're talking Penn State, Ohio State, what's going down in the shoe this weekend. Now, when you talk about momentum, there's no question about it. Ohio State's got all, all the momentum in the world. As an Ohio State fan, I can definitely feel it. I felt that going into Indiana, and I feel the same way going into this week against Penn State, especially with all the rumors coming out that James Franklin is headed over to USC after this season which I don't necessarily, I don't know. I'm still deciding on. However, I do find it very interesting. And hey, if you're a Penn State fan, I can see you getting really defensive over it. And I don't necessarily blame you, but you never know. I mean, you could end up getting a coach who's better than Franklin as it is. All right, that's, that's neither here or there. Let's talk about the game this weekend. So we got 20th ranked Penn State coming in to number five, Ohio State. Penn State's most impressive wins this year would definitely be their win over Auburn in the SEC, 28 to 20. That was a pretty awesome game to watch. They had the whiteout and everything. They beat Indiana 24 nothing. Then they went on the road and lost to Iowa 20 to 23. Then it looks like they had their bye week and perhaps looking ahead maybe because they lost to Illinois 20 to 18 with a nine overtime game. Yes, it's a new uh, overtime rule this year, which I don't know if I like it to be honest with you. That game against Illinois was absolutely atrocious. Not only did I have money on Penn State, but whatever. In that game, Penn State only had 227 yards. 62 rushing yards on third down they won four for 17 all game it's just not gonna get it done so illinois would move on to three three and five and penn state would fall down to five and two as they get ready to go to the shoe to play a blazing hot ohio state team now let me let me say something real quick i see a lot of people on twitter talking about ohio state oh they haven't played nobody we're not good here's something a lot of people don't understand is ohio state was historically bad if you look at the, the games from alabama last year to our first three games this year you know we're last in every category statistically rather it's the bit yeah like in the big 10 it was very bad passing rushing it was the problem was is we were giving up so many damn broken big plays so many big plays so the old ohio state defense against indiana that we just played we would have given up like i don't know 24 at least 20, 24 points with a crap ton of big plays that's why a lot of ohio state fans were so excited because we're not giving up those huge plays anymore and if you watch the game against oregon that's all it was you couldn't could not get a stop on third down and it was just big play after big play and something else a lot of people don't talk about is ohio state only lost by seven it's not like they got blown out at home i mean come on you know week one against minnesota did have me wor worried a little bit about the oregon game and how our defensive scheme was pretty bad and honestly I, after the oregon game i thought it was kind of a blessing that it happened the way it did and we only ended up losing by seven you know because then after that game, you know, after it wasn't the week right after it took a couple of weeks. I believe it was in the Akron game, though, in the second half when we had that pick six. I think that's when we started to realize that, you know, they were changing things up a little bit. Sent They sent Kerry Coombs up to the box. <clears throat> Matt Barnes is down there calling the plays. But I'm sure it's a big combination of all of them working together. Ohio State is starting so many freshmen on the defensive side. It is unbelievable. JT Tiamalu not too long ago was taking recruiting trips in USC's helicopter when he said deuces I'm going to Ohio Ohio State's last game against Indiana they won 54 to 7 and if you watch the first drive and panicked I mean man you you got to understand that all of these first drives to these games are all pretty much scripted right Some, sometimes the second drive but I was definitely not surprised when Indiana was able to drive down because hell they had a really good game plan going in let's take a look at the stats here Ohio State that game had 539 total yards, 352 passing yards, averaging 7.8 yards a play with 187 rushing yards, 31 first downs. I don't think I need to go on, but yeah, it wasn't close, guys. You know, a lot of, and that's the thing too is, yeah, they, they blow out Rutgers in Maryland and people on Twitter are saying, oh, it's Rutgers in Maryland. But a lot of these other fans, they have close games against Rutgers and Maryland. And then they go, well, we could have blown them out, but we just chose not to. Okay. Yeah, okay. Come on. So in the shoe, we're not having a blackout this year. We're having a scarlet out, which honestly, I'm really excited about. I think, uh, I think I'm going to enjoy visually watching it a lot better. 
the key thing for me for Ohio State, as long as Strode is calm and he's not rattled, I don't think they'll have any problem moving the ball downfield against this Penn State defense. You know, as long as we get Henderson involved, it doesn't even have to just be the run game, get him involved in some screen passes or something. I think this offense is poised for a huge game. On the defensive side of the ball, Ohio State just cannot let Clifford beat him. I think Clifford's still a little banged up, but you know he's going to be gunning and he's gonna, and they're all going to be ready to play this one. You can't let Clifford beat him with his legs, and they need they need to force third third down and long, definitely. But now, if you're Penn State, I think your keys to victory is number one: bring pressure on Strode and rattle him, make him feel very uncomfortable on the defensive side of the ball. And for Penn State's offense, they got they got to get that run game going. If they can get that run game going with uh, Clifford and Kane to set up that play action pass. You can absolutely give this Ohio State defense a fit. As far as my prediction for the game, obviously I'm biased, but I've seen how both of these teams have been trending kind of all season. And there was no question about it. When Penn State beat Auburn, I was thinking to myself, all right, well, Penn State is the team to beat because I was at, the, at a time when we were struggling, you know. But I think since then, we're a completely changed team. And I know that they're struggling bad and they're down bad right now. I like Ohio State 45 17 at home. Take it for what it is. Obviously, I'm a fan, but it's just from what I've seen. Let me know what you guys think about the game down below. What you think the score is going to be and what you think uh, Franklin's future is going to be like, whether that's at Penn State next year or not. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll catch you guys later.